Welcome back. Now the third method that we're going to be using for face detection is called HOG or histogram of oriented gradients and it has been implemented in DLIP. It's a library available written in C++ and the binaries are available for both C++ and Python. So we're going to be using with Python. So it is one of the most popular face detection method available by it's available on DLIP. It's called histogram of oriented gradients so it is the original paper is written by Dalal and Triggs here is the link now this model is built by using five HOG filters so filters the idea of filters is always the same just matrices sliding matrices so the five filters are front looking left looking right looking front looking but rotated to left front looking and rotated to right this models come embedded in this particular header which is a C++ C file or C++ file. <coughs> now here's some information about the data set. It was manually annotated by Davis King, who is an amazing engineer. He's the author of DLIP. He, he, is work, he has done some amazing work. So just if you want to just read about him, you can. Okay, now the idea behind HOG filters is to extract features, basically dimensionality reduction. So extract some useful features using the filters, the HOG filters, and then classify those reduced dimension using support vector machine which will assess whether the region is an image or not this is the high level idea now you can see this this flow chart so first of all the you have the input image you just normalize in gamma correction you perform the gamma correction which is not done always because it does not provide much accuracy boost now compute gradients uh, compute the gradients of the image to basically reduce the dimensionality of the image. We'll use it over and over again, to reduce reduction in dimensionality because the systems were not powerful. Systems were not that powerful. It's still the CPUs are not that powerful. So we really have to reduce the dimensionality of the input so that we, we just throw away the useless data. So we'll just compute the gradients. And what the gradient does is gradient captures all of the edges of the image. So using the edges, you can detect what object the image contains. You don't have to have all of the other useless stuff from the image. Now, now distribute the gradients in form of weight vote into spatial orientation cells. We'll look at look into that what it really is. These are basically cells which can be seen as vectors and they contain values of, they, can, they act as a histogram values, values of histogram for gradients now which gradient at which angle has occurred most time so it will contain the gradients it's basically separating the input values into some other form which is of less dimension normalize all these gradients that you have already accumulated Now all finally, the windows that have you have slid through the image to collect all of the HOG finally, over a detection window. After collecting all of the data, you you repeat this linear SVM classification. Now the first step is to compute. Let's let's just look at these steps in detail. The first step is compute the gradients. So to compute the gradients, we have to compute gradients in horizontal as well as vertical direction. One is called dx, the horizontal gradient, and dy. So you apply these kernels, these filters over the image detect edges horizontally this will detect edges horizontally and here this will detect edges vertically now this this kernels can be applied in multiple ways one of the operations is called Sobel filters by applying Sobel operation which is available in OpenCV but basically you just apply this filter over an entire image and the image you will get is are of two kinds the dx and dy and those images will always only contain the edges, edges in horizontal direction and edges in vertical direction. You still have all the data needed, but the dimension has been reduced. Now, as written as it's written here, the gradient of an image typically removes the non-essential information. Now, the HOG. So the gradients have a magnitude and a direction, right? So they are vectors. So we'll just work with that. Now what happen is, happens is the gradient image is then divided into 8x8 eight eight cells to offer compact representation and make our HOG more robust to noise. So we take small patches in order to reduce noise. Now we compute HOG, the histogram of gradients. We have the gradients, now we have to compute the histogram for each of those cells. So we basically estimate the direction 
of gradient in each region we build a histogram of 64 values that is 8 by 8 values of the gradient directions and their magnitudes in each region so we have we will we'll again have two matrices one for the gradient direction and their magnitude which we'll calculate the categories now using those th those two matrices we'll build our histogram now histogram will be of angles from 0 to 180 degree we'll divide this those angles into into sets of 20 degrees that is from 0 to 0 20 40 and that will go on to 160 nine categories right so then we'll calculate two information the direction of the gradient and the magnitude of the gradient which is right here these two matrices then we will build histogram of these matrices so there are three cases so the three cases for building the histogram are first one no the first is the angle is smaller than 160 which is the gradient direction that is the angle is smaller than 160 and it is not halfway between two classes so halfway between two classes the classes here are nine classes which is 0 20 40 and so on up to 160 so if the angle is not between two classes which is a uh, which is completely divisible by 20 which means 80 or some other value like that so if it is divisible by 20 which is not half between two classes then the angle will be added in the right category of the hog so here is the gradient direction and here is the magnitude so just add magnitude 2 to the block of 80 so this is what we are doing we are computing the weights of each gradient right the second is that if angle is smaller than 160 and is exactly between two classes now in this case like 10 is exactly between 0 and 20 now its magnitude is 4 so we will equally distribute 4 into two parts that is 0 and 20 and so on but third can be that the angle is larger than 160 in such case we consider we consider pixel contributed proportionally to uh, 60 and 0 degree so if it's larger than 60 we'll just divide we assume that the value the magnitude will be contributed proportionally to 160 and 0 so for example here 165 is closer to 60 is closer to 160 than 0 so this magnitude 85 will be divided in that proportional will will be divided proportionally to that so the more weight will go to 60 160 and less weight will go to 0 so these are three cases right so in this way we just fill up the entire histogram now histogram looks something like this so you can see the more you can see the higher weight of 160 and 0 degree which basically means the area around 180 degree so which basically means that the area of the image that contains which basically means that the area of image that contains the useful information the gradient in that the the gradient of that particular location at that point points upward or downward which is basically meant by 0 or 90 degree right okay now here's the final part once you have calculated the hogs for 8 by 8 pixels 8 by 8 blocks which are which are these these segment green segments green boxes these are 8 by 8 we then normalize them but we don't normalize each block we normalize four blocks at once so that it again reduces noises noise now normalization adds two effects it reduces noise and secondly it reduces the dependency on lighting so once you normalize a block it won't affect the detections made when you increase or decrease the lighting because it will just normalize all the lightings so this is what happens so earlier when the when you increase the lighting of an image it will you know result into drastic it will result into drastically different detections but now after normalizing it the the impact of lightning will be reduced so this is why we choose and and we not only normalize a uh, we not only normalize a particular 8 by 8 block we just choose four blocks together to normalize them so that it again reduces noise and finally we stack up the hog vectors that we have got of all of these of all of these 16 by 16 boxes and then we pass it into an svm classifier you will get a, a vector of size 36 because each of each eight block contained each eight by eight block results into oh I just sorry 
you will get a final vector of size 36 of each 16 by 16 block because each 8 by 8 block results into a vector of size 9 and you have 4 such boxes so you get 36. Now stack them up no, and classify them using the SVM classifier. This is the working of the HOG classifier or histogram of oriented gradients. So we make a histogram oriented gradients, the weights of them and then pass, pass it into classifier. So these are the steps involved. The next we will cover the code. So the code of histo the code of HOG classifier in DLib is really short and sweet. So we just quickly load OpenCV, DLib, IM utils, which and will import face utils, and then matplotlib dot plot. Okay. Now we'll just create a new function that contains that takes a path as the input. Just load the image, convert it into RGB, and then in grayscale. Now to use the HOG detector we use dlib.get frontal face detector. So this detector is actually the name of the HOG detector. Now finally, to detect something, just call that function with the input image and the scale. We're just using one scale as one, right? And now, this will return an array of detection. So for all the detection, we'll just enumerate that and each each array will contain another array that will give you the height, width, x and y coordinates. So we'll just call rectangular rectangle to bounding box and we'll just pass this detections. So this is the importance of face utils from IM face utils from IM utils. So it will just we'll use this inbuilt function to convert a rectangle into bounding box. So this is another important thing that you have learned uh, in previous previous detectors we didn't use this function because you must know how to do this all by your own but now we can use this because you know that so finally we'll just call this function to get the bonding boxes then put a rectangle you know I won't go into detail about the syntax because I have already covered it in previous videos and then we'll just show that so so let's just uh, quickly run this and let's see what happens so as you can see it takes a bit of time to process these images but I'll go over that in in a second, let me just quickly show you the output. So, as you can see, it has easily detected this face, which was expected because all of the previous methods have detected. Now, all of these faces are also detected, which was not done by the casket classifier, but was done by DNN classifier in OpenCV. And this is something special because it detects almost all the faces except the first one in this smaller region and it has also detected four of the background images, background faces. So it's really impressive. Again, in the next image, it detects all four as expected. In the final image, it is now able to detect the faces which are small and still at an angle. So it has detected four or five faces. Now, this is something quite impressive. Now, uh, well, I can say that, well, you can easily say that this is actually a good, a really accurate classifier. Not the best, but still an accurate classifier. Now, now one uh, one slight detail about DLib DLib classifiers is that whenever visible on whenever visible around the face, so so whenever the face is really prominent, you will see that that bonding box really cuts through the forehead and sometimes through the chin. Here you can see it's, it has cut through the forehead. Here also it's cut through the forehead. Now when the face is really small, you won't it won't be that visible. But again, you can see whenever the faces are big, it cuts through the forehead and through the chin. So it is one of the drawbacks, if you want to say. So it's it's a drawback, but you can train your own data set by your own annotations, then you will just you know improve over this problem. Moving on to detect videos in real time using HOG. Now HOG detection, you, everything will be just same. Just I'll just comment this out to write the video. I won't. I won't write the video. I won't save the video. All right. Okay, so this works really slow in real time. So I'll just show you the real time detection video. As you can see, it's, it's working really slow. I'm, I'm not getting even one FPS, I guess. But what I have done is I have ran this code previously and have saved the output. So I'll just show you the output and you know you can yourself see how 
good it is so so as you can see it works fine it is still detecting the face it's better than the dnn from opencv it's not able to detect at the faces at really steep angles so yeah here's that but overall we can just say that the accuracy is much higher than the dnn the accuracy of the dnn i'll just quickly show you this accuracy this this, uh, this results of the dnn from and the detector from OpenCV, so it detects only one face here, it detects only two background faces here. So it really struggles with really complex data, but HOG can detect faces. Right, so now moving on to the real-time detection, which I will just leave it here, and then pros and cons. Now, pros are it works very well for frontal and slightly non-frontal images. Now, compared to CNNs that we'll see next, this model is really lightweight, works under small occlusion, basically this method works in the most cases except the few discussed below. Now the, the major drawback is that DLib library is trained on images of minimum size 80 by 80. So it won't make detections of images smaller than that. However, you can train your own face detector for smaller size faces. There's always that. The bonding works often exclude the part of forehead and even part of chin sometimes that I've already discussed. It does not work very well under substantial occlusion. It does not work for side faces that we have seen in the output or face looking up and down. Really slow for real-time detectors. So these are the things. Now where you can use it, I'll, I'll say that I found it really appealing, but there was no particular use case for this. So if you have, well, if you have a really powerful system with a GPU, I guess you can use this because the leap can use GPU devices HOG detectors can only be used if you have optimized the library if you have like really written if you have really dug down into C++ code and you have just made some optimizations then and only then can you use HOG on edge so this was all for HOG detectors next we'll cover the CNN based detector in DLib which is one of the best instead of the art